Hello everybody and do we have one dynamite program for you to look at this morning. So much we have to cram it into one half hour. First up, we're going to visit with former jockey Larry LaCourcier, who during his successful career rode nearly 1,300 winners, but because of weight he had to retire prematurely. We caught up with Larry to find out what are the many jobs. He did so many jobs, it's unbelievable what they were and how he got involved in horse racing in the first place. Well, it was an easy transition. I didn't like school, and uh, my father trained horses, and I was small at the time, so this beat school, as far as I was concerned, and, and uh, you know, I grew up in the farm, and I loved animals, you know, so it was a natural transition. You know, when I first started, everyone said, oh, he's too big to be a jockey, He'll, he's never going to do it, blah, 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 right? If you ever want me to do something, just tell me I can't. I loved being a jockey. You know, I loved it. I, I mean, I, I love riding horses and, and racing was just, that, that did it for me. Leaving that was really difficult. And losing weight wasn't too bad, but once you get into your 30s, I was having a harder time losing weight and, and getting ready to, to ride and, and it was taking the fun out of it. You know, it was just, I spent all day getting light enough so that I could ride in, in the afternoon and, and so the fun, you know, was, wasn't there anymore. How long would you spend in the, in the sweat box or spend losing weight? And how much would you lose? I would spend an hour to an hour and a half in the sauna and I would lose like three to five pounds. And then I would take a break and then I would go back and do it again. I usually lost from six to 10 pounds every race day. You went to school after you quit? Yeah. What'd you take up there? We got footage of that. In yeah, Vancouver Film School, graphic design and uh, 3D animation, audio, video. And I really enjoyed it. It was one of the most trying things I've ever done, right? And I still play around on the computer with it and that, but what an extreme, like from being out, outdoors your whole life and then being indoors. I mean, it's almost like you're a, a mushroom, you know, because it's a computer 24 seven, right? The starting gate, you went back and worked. What was that like, working at the starting gate? That was cool. I enjoyed it. You know, it's, it's the same. It's just like being in the jocks room. Aside from the riding and everything, I loved the jocks room just because it, the camaraderie, you know, it, and I love that. And the gate was the same way. You know, all those guys, I mean, we kibitz and, you know, and it's, it's fun. You're paramedic. Somebody had suggested that I become a paramedic because I'm like, okay, what am I going to do, right? And I did all the prerequisites for that. And I started the course, I think, in September of 2005. For the races, there's a paramedic here that works the races. Yep. And when I initially, when I went through the, when I graduated, I came to the racetrack and said, hey, I'd like to be the paramedic for the racetrack. And at the time, at first they said, yeah, that's a great idea. See us next year. And then next year came and they were like, you know what? They didn't have in their budget what I wanted to be paid. So, so they had somebody else do it. And then they approached me here, I don't know, three weeks ago or a month ago and asked if I'd be interested in it. Because um, I can't work on the gate crew because I'm training. So because of conflict of interest, but as a paramedic, it's not a conflict of interest. So they're working with me. I can work as a paramedic and I can still saddle my horses for, for racing. So it's all, it's a... We all could picture you as a trainer because you know you're a horseman. But what made you actually go do it? That's a tough job. To be quite honest, I don't, I never really appreciated it. I mean, growing up with my father and doing the work, I mean, I just did it because that's, I had to, you know. Not really appreciating what really went into it. Until I started doing this, I'm, it's like, it's like, holy crap, Tom. It's way more involved than I ever had any idea. I'm enjoying it, you know, I, I am enjoying it. It's just difficult, I have a bunch of young horses right now and it's, it's a patience thing, you know, you gotta be patient because they're soft and if you push too hard, you won't have nothing, right? So that's where I'm at right now is, is waiting for them to develop. Advantage of getting on your own horses? For sure, for sure. I mean, I don't know how people do it just standing at the gap. I mean, I can pick up long before it shows up. You know what I mean? I can tell, okay, something's not right here. And you go over the horse and you go, well, everything seems normal. You get the vet down, the vet says, well, there's nothing wrong with them. But you can pick it up as a rider, if, if you're in tune at all. 
I could pick up something weeks before it shows up, right? So I think that's a huge advantage, right? I mean, if I can be attentive and say, okay, something's going on here and start working on it, then it never has to show up, right? We notice that you're buying, man, you feed some great food to your horses. What, what's, in the, what's in those, the tub? <laughs> it's just, um, for myself, I believe on oats. You know, oats and, I mean, there's some sweet feed too, but oats is it. I don't believe in pellets, and I know a lot of people feed pellets and that, and whatever works for you. Myself, I look at pellets as processed food, you know? Processed food, I mean, I think everybody, it's a whole, as a health industry now, for, for, for us, everyone's going more than the words natural, and, 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 and that's what I believe when, for the horses. What would I like to see for me in the future? For myself, as a jockey, as a trainer, winning the Kentucky Derby would be the biggest, greatest thrill, you know, a person could ever dream of, right? Is that just a fantasy? I mean, you don't know if you don't try it. I believe in dreams. For myself, my dreams have come true. When everyone said I couldn't be a jockey when I was 16 years old, I proved them wrong, and I was, and I don't regret that in any way.